Hello, this is Brad, and I wanted to run through some of the new features that we've added to ProPresenter version 4.2 for the Mac. Now, these features are specific to the Mac version. We actually have two different teams, one developing specifically for the Mac and the features that we need on that platform, another that's uh, developing for the, the PC. And so you're not always going to see the features line up since we've released this PC version. I want to make you aware of this. However, eventually the PC version will get all these same kind of features, or at least that's our goal, depending upon whether the, the, we're able to easily implement that for the specific platform. But to start out with, I just want to go over some of the major new features in version 4.2. Uh, there have been a lot of bug fixes and a lot of uh, things we're really excited about that we've added into 4.2, which is a free update to all ProPresenter 4 for the Mac users. To start with, I want to go over uh, the change in the layers that we've uh, we've added another layer to this big stack of layers that are that form the, form the fundamentals of ProPresenter version 4. At the bottom, we have our background layer, which is some sort of color. Above that, we have a live video input, should you choose to use such a function. Then above that, we have a video playback layer. That would be for any kind of video backgrounds or images that you're actually showing. Above that is the slides, which for songs are typically just lyrics. And then above that, we added in ProPresenter 4 our props layer. The props layer is useful if you want to have a logo, a church logo, or a welcome to our church, or something that is persistent across multiple slides that just sits on top of all the other layers that are below it. But in per version 4.2, we've added another layer that's called the mask layer. Now, the mask layer is much like the props layer in that it actually sits on top of all the other layers that are that are being used. However, the mask layer is persistent from the time that you quit out of the program and when you when you bring it uh, bring restart the application. So, <clears throat> its purpose is if you actually have some uh, need to actually mask off a certain area of the screen. So to demonstrate this, I'm actually going to show you how that works. I've added the mask function to the toolbar that's at the top of the screen, and when I click on that, I have a couple different masks that I can demonstrate for you. This first one is just applying a pillar box. So you can see it's added a black area to the left and right of the screen. Uh, the second one is actually a little more interesting. It has a circle. So it's just masked out. In this case, I actually brought in a transparent PNG file so that it actually creates a perfect circle mask for everything that's actually going on on my stage. So this, there's, there can only be one mask active at any one time, but you can actually create different masks for the different functions that you need to use for your specific services. And to, uh, to best demonstrate the, the usefulness of this, I'm actually going to show you a video done by a friend of ours named Cameron Ware. He's also known as the Visual Worshipper. And this is actually a video that he actually did using environmental projection, for which he's somewhat known for, uh, in, in a church that is normally a, a standard white wall uh, church. So here he's actually done environmental projection with our advanced module. And you can see he just turned on a mask so it went from being full screen projectors and white on all the walls to mapping out the different ceilings. Another mask layer, uh, or turning on a different mask, masks out the individual screens or the screen that actually appears above the choir. So using this different mask layer, you can create different masks as, as simple or as complex as you wish to do so to mask out different areas of the ProPresenter projection. Uh, and this can be very, very effective when using the advanced module or the edge blending module, as Cameron has demonstrated here. So that's the first big feature that we've added to the software, and we're really excited about it. The next one is the ability, we've, we've enhanced the ability to, uh, to work with Keynote or PowerPoint files. These files can actually be added into your playlists now, and they actually show up with a PowerPoint or a Keynote icon. Now, when you click on this, what's going to happen is, uh, it will launch Keynote or PowerPoint and it will automatically start the presentation. So you can add it into your playlist as part of the workflow uh, of, the, of your program and whenever you actually click on it, it's actually going to launch the program and put you right into slide viewing mode for that particular program. And of course, if I were using multiple screens, I would have them configured so that Keynote's output would show up over the ProPresenter output. And so then I can use the arrow keys or whatever other functions that I need to use for Keynote or for PowerPoint. Uh, and, and I have complete control in those applications. And when I'm done, I can just escape out, and the ProPresenter application will be, uh, it'll, it'll bring, bring it right back to whatever ProPresenter was showing at the time that you actually launched Keynote or PowerPoint. So this is a, not a major new feature, but it's something that we're really excited about because it actually allows us to work with these applications even better than we have before in the past. 
Uh, next function is the ability to actually use quartz compositions. Quartz compositions are special, comp uh, special documents that are graphic documents, but they're dynamic graphic documents. And so you got to kind of know what you're doing. And it comes, uh, Quartz Composer is actually an application that comes as part of the development tools for the Mac. And so there have been some industrious users out there that are actually creating these kind of dynamic elements. And I'll show you some examples here. Um, these are actually included now. Uh, in our sampler library. So this is actually just a grid that's, that's showing some different sparkle effects and whatnot. Uh, I'll change this. Here's another uh, simple quartz composition. So this is actually dynamically generated graphic arts. Uh, here's another one, just different artwork. And you, there, I believe that there will actually be a marketplace that is formed for these kinds of compositions. Uh, prior to our usefulness or our use of this in, in ProPresenter version 4.2, we haven't had the ability uh, to actually integrate quartz compositions into any kind of presentation package with the amount of uh, usefulness that we've added into ProPresenter version 4.2. And the nice thing about this is, is that we actually allow for uh, quartz compositions can have different properties. So if I go into the property inspector for this one composition that's playing with red and blue, I can actually change the colors that are actually being used. So I can set the background, actually I'm just going to set the background to a, to a light gray, that's kind of nice. And I'll actually set the, the particles to I'll do a green just to show off what I'm actually doing here. And so that's just going to affect this instance of this particular quartz composition. And it plays just like a movie. It's just a never-ending movie because it just runs in a loop. But these particles are generated on the fly. And it gives you a lot of uh, capabilities that you didn't previously have in any kind of presentation package for this sort of dynamic driven content. And what gets really fun is when you're actually using the live, vid or, I'm sorry, the live audio input to enhance these quartz compositions. So as I'm playing this uh, composition, you can see that the sound of my voice is actually impacting the bars that are actually showing. And so if you actually had a live video or a live audio input into your computer, then you could actually uh, create sort of a dynamic sort of iTunes visualizer type of experience for your backgrounds, uh, which can be very, very effective. So. That's another feature we're, we're really excited about. And the final feature that I want to demonstrate to you in for version 4.2 is uh, we've actually added new stage display functions. I'm actually going to just pull up a song here and show you that these are, you know, it's dynamic over the lyrics uh, with the, that chorus composition. Um, so we've added the, we have the stage display functions that have been a very, very popular new function within ProPresenter version 4. So in version 4.2, we've added a new function to our stage display, and that is the ability to actually have multiple layouts. So as I open the stage display layout tool, you can see I actually have two different layouts. One is the default, and if I click on that, you can see I've got my current slide and the next slide layout. And then I also have a pastor's clock uh, layout that just shows the, the current time and the time remaining on his countdown clock. You can add as many layouts as you want, and you can switch these out on the fly uh, for different portions of the service. So these are the major new functions that we've added in version 4.2. We're really excited about them and hope that you enjoy them. If you have any questions, please do become active on our user forums where we have a lot of great user feedback and uh, discussions going on. Or drop us a line at support at renewedvision.com. We appreciate any positive or negative feedback, but certainly the positive, uh, and look forward to hearing your feedback soon. Thanks.